Right, so let's start. So today we're going to be talking about the state of AI. Um, you're going to see what has been done, where can we go to. Um, then we move on to the latest advancements and where, the, where exactly is the industry heading to in 2023. Then we'll deal with around uh, some real world applications of computer vision. And the, the most exciting that I'm really looking to touch on is the integration with LLMs like ChatGPT. Uh, it's, it's, it's a craze right now. And then we also have, uh, we're going to go through a quick computer vision workflow. And then finally, we're going to discuss the, the future of computer vision and where do we actually want to take this? How can we actually drive innovation? Uh, how can we solve problems using computer vision and with the way techn technology is going right now? Cool. So uh, before we get into the, uh, the presentation, I just want to let you guys know that in half an hour, uh, we're going to be launching our computer vision uh, mastery for professionals. This is going to be like the most comprehensive and most up-to-date um, program on computer vision thus far. So uh, I'll have, you can click on this link, but it will only go live in half an hour's time. And uh, whoever wants to win a thousand dollars, you can just uh, uh, scan this QR code and uh, or you can just copy this link, paste it in your browser, and then uh, you sort it. Cool. Can everyone hear me clearly? Thanks, Joel. Um, okay, let me just post the next poll there for you guys. Um, all right. So the next poll is, do you want a live demo in this webinar of uh, Zero Shot Learning? So that's the next poll. And I'll just post the other one as well. All right. So you guys can. Hi, Joamba. Nice to meet you. So, um, for those who don't know, my name is Ritesh Kanji, the CEO and founder of Augmented Startups. Uh, I'm qualified as an engineer with masters from the University of Johannesburg. And I'm also an AI YouTuber with over 100,000 subscribers. Um, and like, I really find passion in trying to create innovative things. Like we, there's a lot of people that are just creating like normal courses and just like uh, ordinary content, right? But we're looking at how can we innovate in things to the next level? So that's where we really want to go in 2023. So you can see last year, or was it the year before, we created this um, AI powered drone. So it uh, looked at the gestures of my body and it decided to take off when um, I gave it a gesture. And then if I put my hands down, then it will land. So that is one of the exciting projects that we worked on. The other one that we worked on was um, using a ChatGPT based um, AI that thinks looks and sounds like Elon Musk. So that, that was very interesting for me. Like uh, it actually felt like I was talking to Elon Musk. It was, it was amazing. And on top of that, I learned um, about the Raptor engine that uh, he, he, he basically the AI introduced me to the Raptor engine, which I never knew about before having a conversation with, uh, with this AI Elon Musk. So that was pretty interesting. So just looking at the state of AI, right? This is from Gartner. Uh, it's the hype cycle for artificial intelligence in 2020, uh, basically 2020. You can see where computer vision is. It's right here in, the, they call it the trough of disillusionment. So uh, first it goes through the hype, you know, everyone's so excited. It's going to change the world and everything. And then it goes through the trough, like, okay, how do we even apply it to, um, to solve problems? And people didn't know about it. And afterwards it went, uh, if you look at the, the jump from like 2020 to 2022, so it, it really made sense because this was like the start of COVID, uh, like people weren't going out and that, and this is after all of that. So now computer vision is like on the slope of enlightenment. And I can just imagine this year, how far it'll be. I think it'll probably be somewhere around here, um, by the end of this year, uh, looking at, um, this other one, it's called the. Uh, impact radar. So you got your different uh, sectors over here, critical enablers, transparency and privacy, smart world. And then you can see where edge computer vision is right at the center. So you can see uh, it has uh, a very high mass, not as high mass as edge AI, right? Um, and it's like the range is like now. So we definitely going to get um, a lot of innovations within this area of edge computer vision. And this is like the place to be. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, Edge AI as well. Yeah, um, you can see that Yola V8 uh, outperforms a lot of these models. They haven't like done all of the, they, I don't think they've done the best work in terms of representing like Yola V7. 
they've only represented like the large, uh, the extra large and the large models over here. The next thing I think with the way AI is going is AI with AR, so augmented reality. Now, this is a really cool demo uh, from Pasio. Uh, you'll see what I mean. So he's, this guy is scanning uh, all of the vegetables and you can see all of the cool animations and the UI. So when he swipes the, um, the ingredients, it's going to uh, add it to the list. And when you have this list, it's going to create like a recipe for you or it, it can tell you what's the calorie intake of it, uh, how many macros in an orange or uh, sweet potatoes, for example. So um, they uh, you actually have an SDK, uh, which will, I think um, it's in beta, but they, they, they're they planning on launching it very soon. So this is going to be some really exciting technology. And uh, I can't wait to try this out. Then moving on to um, edge computing, right? So who here uh, knows about Jetson Nano? Uh, you can let me know in the comments uh, on that. Uh, let me just share another poll as well. So you guys can let me know via the poll. Uh, okay, this is a different poll, but um, you can let me know more about what you would like to learn about, um, like the latest advancements in AI CV, real world computer vision, integration with LLMs, et cetera. Cool. So um, with edge computing, we've got um, the Jetson Nano. So the, before this version, there was the Jetson Nano and the Jetson Nano really took the world by storm. Uh, people were using it for drones, robots, uh, you name it now. NVIDIA has, uh, they have released the next version of it, which is much more powerful, which is called the Jetson Orin Nano. So I think this one, you'll get like a decent frame rate for computer vision applications. I'm, I'm yet to try it out. So next up is my favorite. Uh, this is the Open CV AI Kit. So not only do you get uh, stereo cameras, but you also are able to do AI with depth perception. So if you're doing detecting people, you can detect um, how far are they in the image. So this is pretty useful if you want to detect maybe a car in front of you. So you're detecting vehicles, you want to estimate the, um, how far, uh, like the distance in front of you, and you can use this for various applications. And an another one that um, most of you have not heard about is blaze.ai. So they actually doing some embedded computer vision and AI that's uh, embedded into this module. And I'm yet to test this out. Uh, I'm speaking to some of the guys uh, regarding the, getting ha my hands on this platform just to see, uh, is it worth it for industrial computer vision? So onto zero shot learning, what, is, what exactly is zero shot learning? So um, zero shot learning is that it means that you don't need any examples in order to train your model. So zero shot learning um, is a way for you to uh, train a computer vision program to learn new things without exactly needing examples uh, beforehand. So you don't need to, if you want to detect birds, right? You don't need to get a full data set, you know, like the traditional way of getting, um, uh, training a model, you don't need to get the full data set of a bird in order to uh, in order to detect the bird. So you can connect different ideas. Like uh, you can say, I want to detect something that has a tail. It has uh, fur, whiskers, uh, a beak. This one also has a tail, fur, but it doesn't have a beak, uh, right? It has all of this here, and you just describe the model, and it will um, actually. I, I think. Let me just um do a quick demo for you uh this demo is, is is like really exciting and i think this is where technology is going so this uh thing is called pasio uh you can see it's running live uh on the browser so i can train up if i want to train up a model right i'm going to say um let's see i'm going to find maybe this game clip that i have here this is what i'm using for my xbox so i'm going to call it uh xbox uh, wait, let's call it game clip. I'll say 3D printed plastic, uh, which is blue and black um, for to hold Xbox controller. So now we're going to update this. Uh, let's hope it works. Uh, okay, I shouldn't have commas here. All right, line must end. Uh, oh, wait, yes, there we go. Okay, update. So once it detects the, everything, then it will give the label of it and then how confident it is that it is that object. Okay, so it's almost done. All right, so let's see if we put this in front. Yeah, see, there we go. Now, 
that was very simple. Like before, like I brought it in, it was just detecting me as a person, right? Uh, it wasn't detecting anything else. So this is like, this is like next gen. Like I don't need to train this. It's, it's just like picking it up, right? Even though there's other things in the background. So you can try this out um, at labs.pasiolife.com. And you can just like type in a whole bunch of things and maybe like this pink lighter, you can say a pink lighter um, or something like that. And you just, you just describe the object and it will detect it. So this I find is really cool. So that's the live demo. Um, so who here has heard of generative AI? I, I know a lot of people has uh, uh, or have already learned, uh, learned about stable diffusion, Dalet 2, Midjourney. If you haven't, uh, just let me know in the chat and um we can uh i can explain it to you guys for whoever doesn't uh, know about it right and uh basically what uh, i was able to do with uh generative ai was i used stable diffusion i trained it on a model of myself and it was only about say 26 to about 30 images that i used to train it and I was able to generate images of me as a Dragon Ball Z character, uh, Harry Potter as a general, as Doctor Strange, as Iron Man. So these things are really cool. And you don't really need to use um, third-party apps, but you, you know you have to pay for those services. You can just do it yourself. You know, train up a Python model uh, with stable diffusion and run it yourself. You know, it's it's super cool. So let's look at some real-world examples, right? Um, what can we actually use computer vision for, or what's already being how how is it already being used? So this guy is uh, just driving past this uh, the crops and he's detecting all of the uh, the fruits on a tree. And they can, from this, they can determine whether the fruits are ripe. Uh, I think these are apples from the look of it. So whether they're ripe, depending on the color, you can do the color recognition, number of apples. And once you got the, that, you can, can decide, okay, we need to harvest this spot or we can just leave it for a little while. Over here, uh, they're using a phone to detect uh, some drugs or it could be some uh, samples. So this is a full lipid panel and uh, using OCR, they can detect this and state whether they need to uh, order more or less. Over here, we can use computer vision to detect, uh, this is for retail applications, to say whether uh, something is out of stock or in stock, uh, or if it's close to being finished, and you can optimize your logistics uh, based on this data that you have. And speaking of logistics, uh, you, can use, uh, you can use computer vision uh, in different logistical applications. Uh, but mostly for safety, um, to see if uh, did people put the, the chokes on the tires, this can be on an airplane or um, or truck to ensure that, you know, the truck doesn't go smashing into other things. The the question comes in is like, will they still be relevant if ChatGPT takes over where you just like type in the description of uh, what you want to detect and that's it, you know. Um, so I'm just going to breeze through some of this because of time. Uh, so we've got object tracking, we've got deep sort, uh, fairmot, no fair, uh, PyTrack. So our AS1 library um, also integrates YOLO uh, with uh, some of these models. We're trying to get uh, all of them included. So uh, if you want to switch between deep sort and strong sort, you, you just change one flag or one line of code and Bob's your uncle, you are able to do that very, sim uh, very simply. Yeah, so this is, this is uh, what we have there. Um, and then you have your analytics, which will help you gain on-demand access to the most important metrics. And because that's what you want, right? At the end of the day, you want to gain insight into what you are delivering or what problems you're solving. So if you're detecting cars, uh, there's uh, peak traffic at five o'clock in the morning. So you can tell everyone, you know, um, travel to work at eight o'clock, you know, when there's less traffic. Um, so just that's just some examples from the top of my head. Um, if you want to develop uh, this into an app, there's a couple of options. You've got, you've got Streamlit, um, you've got Pl Plotly Dash, PyQt, Tekinta, and uh, Kiwi is good for exporting to apps. Uh, and you can also create web apps using React and Bootstrap. Um, so what does the future of uh, computer vision hold, right? So I think we might be bypassing the training step altogether. So imagine how, how sick that will be, right? I mean, I want to detect, maybe uh, give a description of this, uh, be as descriptive as possible, and then eventually um, give a description of this, this bottle. And um, Bob's your uncle, you know, you've got your model up and ready 
everything sorted. So yeah, um, we've got five minutes. I just want to press this launch button because we are going to be launching our Kickstarter campaign. Uh, we've got five minutes to go, so I'm just going to get that up. If, if you guys really want to check it out, um, you can go ahead at the link. Uh, Somi has posted that to the chat. Uh, thank you, Somi. Um, so yeah, so it is live right now. Um, so let me continue talking. We've got three minutes left. Um, and things are moving more towards multimodal uh, AI CV. So when you want to do computer vision, you're not going to be only doing computer vision. You're going to be doing uh, uh, audio detection with your computer vision model, or you're going to be doing maybe uh, images with text, with uh, context about the image. You're going to have uh, background knowledge to understand more about. So sound, sight, feeling, your, your imagination can go wild. And if you want to develop your, your app into an actual product, uh, there's a lot of services out there that are moving towards no-code and low-code solutions. So like ChatGPT, like I don't need to know how to code in order to use it, right? So computer vision, I, I can just say, I want to detect this glass of water, right? Um, and it must tell me about it, how it looks, how it sounds like, and everything. That's that's mine. You, can, you guys can let me know it down in the comments what do you think the future of uh, computer vision is. Um, so while we're waiting for everyone to type out in the comments down below, um, yeah, so basically we are launching this Kickstarter or we just launched it now. Um, you can click this link. Um, people who are first in line, so early bird adopters will get a discount, um, uh, the early bird discounts. There's only 25 left of each tier um, and I'll go into the tiers very quickly. And we also have a competition to earn a thousand dollars. So every you you can uh, create an entry which is like sharing to facebook or linkedin or whatsapp or you can find a secret code in the kickstarter uh, page and this will help you to um, get more points and the person with the most points will win the thousand dollars so pretty exciting guys um i think uh, while we've got a minute left uh, are there any questions um i'll open up the floor sorry i didn't give you guys enough time uh i should actually upgrade my zoom package <laughs> 